What's up, guys? My name is Jordan Anderson from Valley Films. Welcome to a very special episode of the Valley Films Vlog. So today is a very special episode. We are going to be reviewing the Sony a7S mirrorless camera. We're actually shooting on the a7S for this episode currently. So we're going to go over just a few major points uh, concerning the video, not just, we won't go too much into the photography section. We're going to go into body, construction, battery life, video settings, picture profile, amateur versus professional filmmaker, and then I'll give you my overall opinion. Things that will not be featured in this video, we are not going to go over the photography notes for this camera, although this is a great camera as if you want to become a photographer, but maybe check out the A7 or the A7R. We're not going to go over the 4K settings, although it can uh, externally record to 4K. And in this video, we're also not going to be touching on the sound aspects of this camera. This camera is built for looking great, but not sounding great. Okay, so we're back in the studio. Uh, let's just kind of break down a few things about the Sony A7S. Uh, let's start with the body. The body of the Sony a7S is kind of puny. If you're a big guy, if you got some big meaty hands, uh, it's actually really tiny in hands. The Sony, uh, it's, I mean, it just, it's just too small. Like uh, coming from like the 70D or someone who has worked with like a 5D Mark III, it's just going from that really meaty, beefy feel to just something really tiny and slender. But then does it really matter because if you're on a rig or if it's on a tripod, then does then size doesn't really matter how big it is because if it's smaller, that means it's less weight. I mean, you know, like the Red Epic, that's a really freaking big camera and you know, you don't hear people complaining about how big it is because you just put it on a rig. The buttons and dials, they're solid, well built. Uh, I can't see these buttons ever going loose or getting just kind of worn out over time. I can't really see that. These are really solidly built. Buttons, click card, everything is just well constructed. The record button! Everyone has complained about this for the Sony a7. The record button is really, really in the wrong place. If they were trying to make this a filmmaker's camera, that was the one thing they missed. Uh, everyone just says, like, oh, it's a small thing, but a lot of times when I was framing up the shot, I, I, you know, I would feel off to the side, try to find that record button, and, you know, you want to just keep looking forward, looking at your screen, and you end up having to turn your head over to the side to hit the record button. The button doesn't even protrude out, it's just very flush up against the body, so even if you were to just kind of do it blindly, you're still trying to hunt for that record button. Often times I would think I was recording, and it really wasn't not good. The battery. My first camera was a Sony A37, which uses the same batteries. These are little baby batteries. They're about that big. They suck. They last like less than two hours. I mean, it's... We, I was shooting this, I was shooting the wedding over the weekend and draining just constantly. I mean, like, I think you can maybe get like one hour if you're constantly recording, maybe two hours if you're on and off shooting. It's, I would get a battery grip or external power because... Okay, let's move on to the video settings. So this Sony A7S has a huge menu selection. There are plenty of pages, there are a lot to file through, I mean, page after page, I would often get very lost in the menu settings. I was easily able to navigate the menu, but it was really dense, which I like that because that means that they're definitely putting a lot into the software and giving professionals a lot to work with, a lot of options, a lot of you know settings that they can control and turn off and turn on. You want the beep, you want this, you want the volume up, volume down. So I could not record in the 50 megabytes per second XAVCS, unfortunately, because I didn't have a memory card that was 64 gigs. So I had to knock it down to AVC HD, which is okay. It's not bad, but I was really hoping that I was, I was gonna be able to use that higher definition codec versus just the standard AVC HD. Uh, this camera has 60 frames per second, and I think it also has 120 frames per second. I didn't mess with it at all because 60 frames is just okay, but if you're having to make me go down to 720p just to get in slow-mo, then it's almost pointless. I'm not gonna, why would I record in 720p do slow-mo and then project it out to 1080p, that just... If it's not in 1080p, slow-mo is pretty much pointless to me. The movie mode. Movie mode was uh, just how Sony has it. They kind of do a, 
they kind of sit on the fence with like half professional, half amateur. Same with photography where you have the program mode, aperture, shutter, and manual. You have the same thing with video, so you can go to program, which it'll put you in default, so you cannot change the aperture, you cannot change the shutter speed, or the, you can only just change ISO. So when you're working, you want to work in manual mode, and then you'll be able to change f-stop, ISO, shutter speed. Yeah, it just, it just seems like they were kind of just on the fence about being kind of working towards amateurs, but also kind of catering to the professionals. I mean, things like face detection and like, just kind of really cheesy things that like old, like moms will use when they're just taking the photos. It works for that, but like for a professional, like I don't really care that there's a face detector or you know I can I can get everybody's face and you know like just it just seems at this point if you're gonna give me some high-end software and a high-end camera, go completely professional and just kind of just weed out the, all the amateur settings. Custom buttons. This camera has several custom buttons, which I really like. I really wish some of the Canon DSLRs had custom buttons. The, these were really cool, and actually, you can customize them to anything. So I had, uh, I made my custom buttons more video related, so zebras, peaking colors, but you could have changed it to almost anything. I think it had like up to 50 different selections, 50 different button modes. As far as a filmmaking camera, the peakings and the zebra on this thing really make this thing. Uh, really workable as a video camera. The LCD screen is really crappy for checking your focus or like getting the right exposure. If it didn't have the peaking mode, I was always having to check the, you know, just put my eye up to the, uh, to the viewfinder to check my focus because that LCD screen is not very well for checking your focus without the peaking because uh, that LCD screen, it swivels, it's nice, it's cool, but not very well for outdoor shooting or getting that precise uh, focus. I was using uh, the Speed Booster from Metabones, and I think it was an earlier version, and it just didn't really work well with my lenses and the camera's motor for autofocus. Really take a long time to search for that focus, and then even when I was like just dead on focus of something, it would, you know, like there's nothing else that the camera can focus on. It would often just kind of bounce back and forth, look for it, not really find it, and then just kind of just sit there out of focus. I want to blame that on the Metabones and my lenses. Let's go into some of the picture profiles. Let me just preface with my picture profiles. When I normally shoot, I shoot in neutral picture style and I'll take the contrast all the way down. I will take the sharpness or detail all the way down and I'll usually take the saturation down all the way. That way it gives me a completely clean slate. The camera's not sharpening it for me. The camera's not choosing which colors are the right colors for the picture. It just, so that way I can do all the stuff in post and the camera just gives me sort of a blank canvas with the video. I also want to preface that I am not a colorist and I do not do very much color grading, nor do I know how to do very much color grading. I just kind of do the basics. The first color profile that I was really excited about and pretty much the main reason I got this camera was the S-Log picture profile. This gives you some really rich detail, really low contrast shooting, and that way you're able to bump up the colors, choose the colors, pick your sharpness, and it's just, it's freaking awesome. The baseline ISO for the S-Log is 3200, so it makes it really bright. So if you don't have an ND filter, which I didn't, then you're probably screwed. If I wanted to shoot outside, I was often in F22, having to shoot in that baseline 3200, and it was still, if I wasn't filming in the shade, then it was completely blown out. Unfortunately, I didn't shoot most of the wedding that I shot this weekend in S-Log. I actually didn't shoot it at all. Uh, I was excited about S-Log, but I found out that it's really complicated and very, you need a lot of practice to actually get the colors right, and it takes a little bit more skill in the color grading sector. So that took me to the next color profile, which I used for the entire wedding, which was Cine 4 and S Gamut. The native ISO on this one is ISO 200, so it's very manageable. You know, I can keep my f-stop low and not have to worry about the picture blowing out. So Cine 4, they had Cine 1, 2, 3, and 4. So Cine 4 is, I thought, was the closest to S-Log without going into the crazy color space and having to be a master colorist. Give me the best without being too complicated. So I went with Cine 4, S gamut. Okay guys, so we're gonna do a little night test with the Sony A7S. Uh, as you can tell, I'm out here in the backyard with the nice swamp critters. Uh, it is very dark. And the only light source we have right now is our iPhone light and these little LED 
Christmas lights behind us. Um, you can't see them. So let's crank it up. So this is 10 times beyond what I would be using for my Canon 70D. We are at 8,000 ISO. Four hundred nine thousand six hundred ISO with an iPhone light, some Christmas lights, and in the middle of the night. Okay, let's go over amateur versus professional. So Sony has split the line with this camera on being catering to the amateur while also catering to the professional. It gives you professional camera settings, professional look, high megapixel, great low light power. Uh, but then it also gives you kind of the fun like sports mode and portrait mode, which are really just if you're I, I it just didn't make sense that they would kind of throw those in when you could probably just focus more on the professional side. I mean, I use like the Canon 70D, and that gives that's more of the professional because like if you go just one step down to the 60D, then for like the pictures it gives you all these like sports modes and like landscape mode, really just amateurish kind of picture profiles. The Sony does the same thing. I really wish they would just stick towards the professional side as that seems to be their biggest market. It has limited settings for the amateur, but it almost seems like why even put that in there? So if I were to get this camera, I would definitely need to get a cage. I would need to get a battery grip or some sort of external power because this camera is just really puny and just, uh, I just, w I just wish it had some like professional beefiness to it. It just, it just seems too, I need some like I need some solid weight when I'm kind of filming because I if I'm just I mean if my lenses are outweighing my camera it it just it just makes it really hard to work with sometimes I don't know I'm just maybe I'm just weird like that I just need like some kind of just I just need some like something heavy to hold on to or a grip or a handle it's kind of dainty in the hands I have mixed feelings about it on one hand the software is awesome very geared towards professional but the hardware is just doesn't it just doesn't come through for on the professional side the record button the size the battery life the it just it's not quite the whole package but what camera is the whole package for anybody so i think total price this runs at 24.99 and then i would have to get a cage for this and i would need extra batteries for it and i would need an adapter like a metabones adapter to put canon lenses on it after that it gets to be pretty expensive would I buy the Sony a7S? I would not. Would I rent this again? Yes, I would. Would I use this for a film? Absolutely. This is an incredible monster at low light. This is insane. If I were to shoot some sort of film that was mostly at night, this is the camera that I would use. It is a tiny little power punch and a monster of the night. So that's it. That's the entire review there, short and sweet. If you want to read a little bit more into the details of this camera, we have our full blog post, which you can find in the video link. If you have any questions, send it to us here on Twitter. I'll be happy to answer any of your filmmaking questions. My name is Jordan Anderson from Valley Films. Thank you for watching.